Hey, good day, Blue Cool fans. Hey guys, uh, you guys are gonna be hanging here live watching me while I record my normal uh, podcast. And uh, so I decided to go live here on the iPhone on a tripod. And just so you know, this is the home studio, so I'll also be recording obviously from my webcam and uh, you know the, the whole home studio. So you guys got a little behind the scenes there, but anyway. Uh, I'm on the mend. We're recovering from lung surgery last week, so I'm going to be doing a 250th episode with just me instead of a traditional co-host. So uh, listen in and hang out, and um, yeah, we're going live here, so stand by. All right, live on video, stand by for audio. All right, good day, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Live a Fuel Show. This is a special episode, our 250th episode here in February 2019. Uh, I'm actually recording this uh, live from the home studio, and actually it's literally streaming live on YouTube while we record. So uh, the YouTube people, uh, you guys might not be able to get the amazing audio that I have here with the home studio. But stay tuned, once this episode goes live, uh, I'll be posting a second video, which I'm recording on Zoom as we speak. So we're literally recording audio right now, recording, recording video on the Zoom.us webinar platform, and we're recording live on YouTube uh, for the YouTube world. So anyway, guys, without further ado, this is a special episode since it's my 250th, since launching this show September 2016. So, uh, or is it 17 now? I can't even keep up. We're, we're, over two, we're almost two and a half years old. And again, traditionally, most of our podcasts we air are with guest co-hosts. And normally I would do that. However, since I had a recent health challenge, uh, for those of you who follow me on social media at Live the Fuel, uh, or my personal feed on Instagram at Scott W. Mulvaney on Instagram, uh, I, has, I had some challenges. I, I decided to accidentally... Uh, collapse a lung of all things and uh, me being a health and fitness nut that was quite a surprise so let's catch you guys up uh, obviously this is a solo episode with uh, your founder your chief intrepid officer Scott Mulvaney of Live the Fuel uh, thanks for tuning in and please listen in because I got a lot of health tips to share uh, I like to talk about health business and lifestyle on this show uh, but obviously this will be more of a health and fitness challenging and informative episode since uh, in my adult life, I've, I finally have accomplished, not that it should be a goal, uh, being hospitalized as an adult patient. Uh, so let's, let's go ahead and catch you guys up. I decided to, without my goal setting aspirations, uh, to achieve a collapsing of my left lung. Now let's be real, it, it's not actually a full collapse of my left lung, it was actually a partial collapse. And uh, let me give you a quick backstory on that before I catch you all the way up to the, the medical treatment that I had to go through. So uh, now it's basically a month ago, right at the end of the holiday season, you know, 2018 ending, 2019 beginning. Uh, I was, you know, training hard one week and we had three back-to-back -back hero, hero wad. For those of you guys who follow me, I'm a big CrossFit guy. A hero wad or a hero's workout of the day wad. Uh, is usually more intense. It's more involved. There's a, uh, a more strenuous activity, I guess you want to say, built into the workout programming. And I did three of them back to back, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, over the holiday weekend. And uh, I've done, I do them all the time. It just so happens that maybe I was a little fatigued uh, by the third day, uh, that Monday, I was doing what's called uh, 12 Days of Christmas, uh, which is, if you know the song, Every time you complete the next step in the workout, you still have to go back and complete everything you've already done. And as you progress through the 12 days of Christmas, you keep going back and doing everything all over again. So it's a long workout. It's basically an hour long. Well, I don't know if I was fatigued, uh, but I mean, it's taken me some time while laying in the hospital bed for eight days to kind of trace back where this all started. And so this is an important tip in this podcast episode about body awareness, uh, paying attention to your health, pay attention to your fitness, make sure you know what's going on. Well, I, I did know that I displaced a, a rib on the left side in my back. Um, 
and I think that might have been just I was on one of my overhead lifts. Maybe I was a little tired, and when I caught the bar, it might have just you know crunched my ribs and, and displaced it. It was just a little displacement in the cartilage. And I, I always why I explain it that way is because I did that years ago, and uh, when I was when I was served as a hot shot when I was doing wildland firefighting. For those of you guys who follow the show, if you're newer listeners, um, in 2010, 2011, I served as, as a federal hotshot wildland firefighter uh, all across the Western U.S. And I remember on one of the fires, I had injured myself same way, displaced a rib. It was stabbing pain. Uh, it was very uncomfortable because when you go to breathe, or if you're doing strenuous activities like fighting wildfires. Uh, I couldn't catch my breath, and uh, upon returning for days off, I went to a chiropractor, and she confirmed that a rib was a little bit out of alignment, which is why my rib cage wouldn't fully expand upon breathing. And again, this shows up on strenuous activities like heavy training, or what we were doing was obviously uh, backpack hiking, you know, hiking with chainsaws, digging in the dirt, you know, fighting wildfires in the wilderness. Anyway, point is. I know a chiropractor could fix it. So, but, you know, this injury a month ago, it was over the holiday week. Uh, they, they were off. Uh, uh, they were not open. So I, I had to wait a few days to get back in there to have them help fix it. Well, during that transition, obviously, the rib is out of alignment. I'm not able to breathe properly. And... Uh, let's just say I got sent into a few occasional fits of aggressive coughing. So here's the skinny. Again, back in 2010, 11, I did this, put the rib back, took a day or two to recover. I was fine. Uh, no major fits of coughing back then. So I, I never spontaneous, I never spontaneously collapsed my lung or according to the new term that I've learned in the past two weeks that I'll be teaching you guys here today. I've never achieved a spontaneous pneumothorax. Uh, so a spontaneous pneumothorax, aka a partial collapse of the lung. And uh, yeah, super fun. And I am being sarcastic. Uh, so again, years ago, didn't have that. Well, a month ago, luckily enough, I achieved that. And here's the best part. Did not know it. I The rib was out. I waited a few days. Um, I, I stopped doing workouts. I was at least listening to my body that way. But I had already gone through a couple of fits of, of aggressive coughing because I was uncomfortable. You know, I knew things weren't right. Um, I was trying to do my deep breathing exercises and, and that didn't work and that was making me cough. So I finally made it into the chiropractor. Actually, the day before I made it into the chiropractor, I went in for a deep tissue massage because I know how to do self-care. I thought I was helping things. Um, I helped him, uh, you know, basically loosen up a lot of the tissue. He, uh, in that area because I know that if you can get a massage before chiropractic care it makes things that much better so anyway massage Cairo rib goes back into the right place I think I'm gonna be fine so over the coming weeks I start returning to my normal training routine uh, doing my workouts and I still had this random occasional cough and I can't figure out why so I'm like okay well maybe because the rib was out maybe because the rib cage was a little jacked up you know, maybe I, I, I just fired up a few things. Maybe I got a little sick. Maybe I was getting a chest cold. Um, I don't think I would have gotten something as bad as walking pneumonia, but that's an option. And I'm just doing all this hypothesis type of stuff, but continue knowing like, hey, I'm healthy, I'm fit, you know, I'm a CrossFitter, you know. But go back to listen to your body, I kind of maybe moved into a phase where maybe I thought I was a little indestructible. And, uh, you know, we'll call this a uh, hashtag or air quotes, you know, tough guy uh, blindness, we'll call it that way, because I, oh, I pride myself on my pain threshold. Well, wake up call, guys. So the the coughing does not subside, and actually it increases. Um, and I, I, right before I left for a business trip, before we found this on an x-ray, uh, my chiropractor go back again. She's like, you know, Scott, this area is pretty fired up. It's really weird that you're still coughing because you feel like a million bucks, like you, you feel good. Mind you, uh, this last visit to the chiropractor, she says, hey, I'm gonna give you a script uh, to go visit and get an x-ray done. She's like, try and get this sooner rather than later. This was on a Monday. Um, I was leaving for a business trip to Syracuse, New York. So I said, hey, you know what? I'll get this done when I get back. Well, <laughs> one 
fun little piece in here was right before I went back to the chiropractor for a second visit to have her check on things, the weekend before, I had competed in a CrossFit competition. So again, guys, this is, again, four weeks ago, displaced the rib. Two weeks later, back to normal training after the, after the massage, after the Cairo. I was even doing uh, igloo cryotherapy uh, to help reduce inflammation, doing a lot of my own self-care. Again, you could write this all down. These are all health tips, guys. Um, these are things that I've had to self-learn, and, and it's, it, it, they work for me. Uh, uh, but I also am obsessed with bone broth. Uh, I'm, I'm making my own bone broth. I'm buying bone broth. I'm drinking it like a tea like I always do. Uh, there's a lot of anti-inflammatory benefits to that, just like eating ginger or uh, you know turmeric. Depending on where you're from, you might pronounce it turmeric. And so I'm doing all the stuff. I think I'm good because I got this CrossFit competition coming up. Which, mind you, I didn't really have to, like fully train for, but I got thrown in in the, in the last few weeks because um, the gym I train at, SYR CrossFit downtown, shout out to Rob Eschbach, the owner, and the whole SYR army over there. Um, again, historically, if you're a newer listener, I, I'm, a, I'm a CFL1 CrossFit trainer too. I don't train full-time anymore, but um, I'll drop in, cover classes at the gym I used to train at, shout out to CrossFit Adoration in the next city next door here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania to uh, Coralie and Jen and the whole Adoration Nation there. So again, I'm still doing my thing, guys. Like, I think I'm good. I got this random cough. I think it's just like a little sick fit. I, I'll, I'll get through this. I, I don't get sick. So anyway, so two weeks before the surgery, uh, which we'll get to, I uh, again, two weeks after the rib little thing, I think I'm good, I do the CrossFit comp. Well, I couldn't figure out that day, why I could not recover from workout transition to workout transition. Uh, these were three man teams and three female teams. Uh, so basically three people per team, uh, men against men, women against women, uh, different age groups. Uh, I think I'm doing great, you know, for the fact that I got this weird sick thing, little occasional cough. There's four workouts that day and you average about 30 minutes to 60 minutes of a break in between. So I'm doing everything I can to maximize my recovery, get my breath back, all of that. Well, I, uh, you know, we finished the comp. Luckily, we didn't have a ton of competitors. Our team actually came in third. But the very last workout, actually, no, sorry, the second workout, I think, uh, had jump ropes involved. And again, like, here's your tip, guys, you know, listening to your body. For the first time in my life, I'm jumping rope while my teammates are holding a, uh, I, think, I think this was the workout where they're holding a partner deadlift. So two men or two women lift the bar and they have to hold it while they're holding it. I'm ripping out jump rope and 150 singles and there's multiple rounds through. So at the end of that workout, I remember during the workout, I'm like, dude, like I'm fast on the rope, but you know, I'm a little gassed at the end of it. And I made a joke. I was like, dude, it was weird, man. I'm jumping rope and I feel something shaking in my chest. So I was like, man, you know, was that mucus? You know, do I have like a mucus buildup? Am I actually getting the chest cold that I thought about? And then I made a joke. I was like, it was so weird. It felt almost like my lung was shaking inside of my chest, like moving up and down, because I've never felt this before. But right then and there, my self-awareness, knowing my body, I actually made the correct guess, but joked about it and moved on. So by the fourth workout that day, uh, I'm, I'm still, I'm gassing. This last workout, <clears throat> each of your teammates rotate through. You gotta do a, uh, you gotta jump down, and if you guys know what burpees are, you drop and do a burpee, jump over top of a rowing machine, drop and do a burpee again, and you keep going back and forth. And I'm, I'm actually normally pretty good at this, so I go all out, it's the last workout. So I'm, I'm ripping it, I'm faster than one of my teammates. My other teammate is pretty much with me. We're both, we're trucking, we're trying to shave time off the clock. So you do 12 burpees over the rower, stop, you know, fi you know, finish those 12, jump onto the rower, and then you rip out 12 calories on the rower, 12, 12 you know, pull enough, enough energy through the rower to count 12 calories worth on the rowing machine screen, jump off, there's a, dump, a 35 pound dumbbell there, and then you do 12 alternating snatches. So you're you know, full, full snatch to full extension overhead, one, drop, touch the ground, switch hands, two, hit your 12 through, tag your teammate in, they go into the same rotation. So we're ripping through these, like three rounds. By the last round, I'm the closer. 
Again, guys, dude, after four workouts a day, I'm gassed. I don't understand what's going on. I'm getting lightheaded. I finished this sucker and I'm just done. I'm laying on the floor. I, I lift my arm over my head. I'm like, what is going on? I can't breathe right. This is messed up. Um, again, still assuming that maybe I'm just getting sick. So, so that connects you back up to that second follow-up session I mentioned earlier about me going to the chiropractor. I go back to my Cairo, I tell her what happened, and she's like, yeah, I, well, one, that's impressive that you're sick or you've got a chest cold thing going on and you're still able to compete, you know, good job. Uh, you know, I've competed in comps before, she's worked on me before and after comps before. She knew, she knew everything that I'm doing, drinking my bone broth, doing my igloo cryotherapy, doing massages, like, like we thought well, I'm good. And then I told her about the cough again. And she's like, all right, listen, here's the x-ray script. Please get in and, and get a script done or get an x-ray done. And I was like, you know, I can get this done faster. I always make a joke because my fiance is a equine horse veterinary doctor. And she owns a portable x-ray machine that they take out to the farms to x-ray animals. And we've actually used it on each other if we ever needed an x-ray. Uh, actually, the x-ray on, on file at my chiropractor was one we did ourselves. And she's like, no, this time I want you to do it you know, with a human facility, you know, using a human radiologist that's actually gonna analyze your scan. I want to make sure there's no problems. Okay, so that's that Monday. I could have tried to squeeze in a visit. I said, nah, I, I gotta head to Syracuse. I'm good. Again, my energy levels are fine. Other than this random cough, I think I'm good. Uh, a random accord, occasional shortness of breath. Um, come back that Friday. And I, again, I'm sipping in and out of meetings all day. I'm, vis I'm visiting my client. And she's like, hey, have you gone and gotten your x-ray yet? I'm like, no. I was like, you know what? Here's the best part. Shout out to Dr. Megan Cannon, sports psychologist. She's a regular co-host on this show. I was supposed to go record a live podcast with her. And her new office is right down the road from where this walk-in uh, facility with St. Luke's Hospital, St. Luke's University Health Network, who, who saved me. Um, they had a facility right here in Allentown, PA. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna zip back home real quick and get changed because I was in yoga gear. Mind you, I just did yoga that Friday too before going for the x-ray. Before go, uh, I think I'm gonna zip in, grab this x-ray, and then go meet Dr. Megan Cannon because I was gonna record a new podcast uh, that we're gonna air this month. So I still have to go and re-record with her yet. We're working on trying to get that rescheduled now, but I think I'm just walking in, walking out, grabbing an x-ray and they'll send it over to uh, Dr. Robin Kaplan of East Penn Chiropractic, who's my chiropractor. Well, the girl comes out. This is probably around 6 o'clock at night because um, they have walk-ins up until 7.30. And she's like, are you in any pain? And I was like, no. And mind you, I haven't gotten the results of the x-ray yet. I was like, no, I'm good. I was like, a, you know, healthy, fit, just did a fitness comp, blah, blah, blah. Just did a business trip. You know, just this random annoying cough. She's like, okay, well, I need you to wait here. Um, I'm waiting for one of our physician assistants to get cleared up and he's gonna come out and go over your x-ray with you. I'm like, okay, whatever, I'm like, whatever. <clears throat> She's like, I need you to sit in this room. Well, I'm an on-the-go kind of guy. I'm not sitting in the room. I get up, I'm walking around the hallway. So I go back, I sit back down and the guy comes in. And I actually know this dude. So I was like, oh, wait a minute. Like he's from the same CrossFit gym that the competition was at. His wife has actually competed on the same team with my fiance in past competitions. But anyway, I'm like, yo, dude, what's up? Like, I give him a pound, and he just has a serious look on his face. He's like, all right, God. He's like, all right, Scott, what's been going on? He's like, I got your x-ray results, but did I hear right that this has been going on for a few weeks? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, dude, didn't you just compete in our Granite Games throwdown? That's the name of the competition we did. I was like, yeah, last Saturday. He's just like... He's like, man, he's like, dude, you're, you're, you're in a severe situation. And I said, okay, what do you mean about a severe situation? And he says, you have a spontaneous pneumothorax. And I'm like, oh, okay, and that is? He's like, you have a partially collapsed lung. He's like, how long has this been going on? I'm like, I don't know, over three weeks. He's like, and you competed with this? And I said, I guess. He's like, man, he's like, come with me. So we go back into the uh, x-ray office attached to the x-ray room, and he's, they got the scans up on the screen, and he shows me, and he's like, dude, he's like, look at this. He's like, here's your right lung. Here's how it's supposed to normally look. You see, like, white fibrous tissue on the black and white x-ray. 
it's all kind of dense and overlaid. He's like, here's your left side. He's like, you see this black area above your lung? I'm like, yeah. He's like, you see the black area below your lung? I said, yeah. He's like, that's air. He's like, you have a significant collapse of your lung. This is dangerous. And I said, well, obviously my lung's not fully inflated. So I'm doing my normal self. I'm just all positive. I'm making a joke. And he's like, I need you to go to the ER now. I'm like, the emergency room? Really, dude? I was like, can I just go to the doctor? He's like, no, 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 you don't understand. This is the ticking time bomb. His exact words. I said, uh, okay, could you define ticking time bomb? Because again, I've had this for three weeks. You know, went back to working out, doing all my self care, just did the CrossFit comp. Like, is it as bad as you really think? And he's like, Scott, that's all air in, uh, in and around your lung, preventing your lung from inflating. He's like, the ticking time bomb thing that I think you, you're missing here is that. It could fully collapse at any time. Now, granted, ladies and gentlemen, I've n never had this severe of a trauma. I've had my shoulder rebuilt twice back in 1999 and again in 2007. It's all outpatient stuff. I've never been hospitalized. So I get like a little bit of a heart flutter here. I'm like, okay, all right, um, cool. All right, so I'll head down to the ER. And he's like, no, 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 no. I need to call you an ambulance. And I said, dude, come on, man. Like, really? Are, are we kind of overkill here? And he said, no, no, as I said, ticking time bomb. I was like, well, I think you guys are just trying to protect yourselves. You want to make sure nothing goes wrong. He's like, no, 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 dude, if the lung fully collapses, you may, you may lose the, your, your control and your ability to breathe. He said, granted, you're healthy and you're fit and it's helped you so far. We don't know what's going to happen if this thing fully collapses. He's like, also, you could actually stop breathing. And I said, okay, uh, let me call my fiance. So I call her, loop her in, I'm like, baby, don't be upset, but they're asking me, I'm at the x-ray place, they're asking me to go in an ambulance to the ER. Apparently I have a collapsed lung. So I think she's not ready for that either because she knows I'm a jackass and I'm always beating myself up and this is a big thing. She's like, well, you know, ambulance rides are like 1500 bucks. She's like, can I just come take you too? And I'm like, babe, I'm not worried about the money. But I, I, I put her on speaker, I'm like, dude, like. I was like, there you go. I was like, she could drive me down. He's like, is she trained in emergency care? I'm like, well, she's a horse vet. And he's like, dude, you don't understand, man. He's like, I need to call you an ambulance. We need to get to the ER. We need to get, we need, they need to put a chest tube in you and get the air out of your chest and get your lung back to full inflation. Like, this is serious. So I said, all right, babe, here's what's going to go down. Uh, I I'm going to head to the ER. It's gonna take a little bit. So I was like, you know, she, she's actually supposed to be meeting girlfriends of ours. And I was actually gonna finish the podcast, go meet them there for a bite. And I was like, listen, why don't you go meet them? Still have a bite, don't be worried, I'm fine. I'm gonna do this ambulance thing and you can meet me down in Bethlehem at St. Luke's headquarters uh, where I had them take me to. So again, guys, I'm, I'm still playing this off like it's no big deal. Now, let, let me remove the tough guy out of this episode. I need to show you truth and vulnerability. I ended up passing the fuck out. <laughs> now, briefly, but um, I, I'm not a pass around kind of guy. So anyway, he calls the ambulance. I'm sitting in the room and I'm bored. I, I need to do things. I got to talk. And now I'm intrigued because, okay, this is so dangerous, but it hasn't happened yet. So I, I walk back out to the counter where he and the other nurses are sitting there. And he's, again, he's a PA. And I'm, I start asking him, like, dude, so... Give me more details about this whole ticking time bomb thing. I need to understand what's going on. And he said, well, if the lung would fully collapse, he's like, the worst case scenario is that you can have a massive shift in your chest cavity. And I'm like, okay, uh, what are we talking about? And he's like, you, your lung would fully collapse, right? So massive amounts of air would rush into your chest cavity. You've already got air in there now that does not belong there. The air belongs in your lung, not your chest cavity. Now, that's a quick lesson here, ladies and gentlemen, on a, on a collapsed lung. My lung was leaking air into my own chest cavity. My lung basically self-collapsed itself. So if there's air there, you're preventing the space for the lung to inflate. He said, if that got worse and fully collapsed, released more air into the chest cavity, he's like, your heart, your other lung and other bad things could shift and cause problems. So now I'm getting like, I, I was like, oh, okay, okay, this is, this is, this is serious. It's like, uh, whew, okay. 
So I take a deep breath, and then I felt like, um, like a, and I'm, here's, here's a, I'm not trying to justify the passing out, but admittedly, I had fasted all day. I do this on regular vacation. Normally, I'm not fasting to prepare for a surgical encounter or a, or a hospital visit, so I just, maybe that helped with the passing out thing, I don't know. So I was like, whoa, okay. So I start feeling like a little bit of a hot flash, and um, maybe I'm like psychologically freaking out. Well, not freaking out, but like, okay, this is a shock. So I didn't know I was literally risking my life. So I was like, oh, whoa, I feel it hit me. And I'm like, oh, you know what, dude? Okay, I'm good, thank you. I'm, I'm gonna wait for the ambulance. I know they're on the way. I'm gonna go sit back down in the little off suite that they had me in. So I sit back down and I feel like hot flashes coming. And this is a lesson. It's good that I was sitting down, or at least go, I should have laid down on the bed. I'll tell you that in a second. I sit down, I feel like the blood rush to my head. I feel like a, a hot flash coming on. A little bit of a spin starts happening. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, all right, all right, tough guy. Don't, don't be passing out. So let me just take a deep, couple deep breaths. And here's where I think I made a mistake. I closed my eyes and I tilted my head back a little bit and started taking a few deep breaths. And that was the last thing I remember. Next thing you know, I, I have a sharp pain in my head because I basically was sitting on the chair and just literally fell over and just hit the floor. And I hear like a bang and I'm not kind of out of it. It was like, it was, and they said it was like split second. Literally the ambulance people had just gotten there and they were coming in with the gurney. So all of a sudden I feel people touching me and I'm like, whoa. And I, uh, again, for the video watchers, you can see how I'm reacting. For the listeners, I like, I jerk my head my shoulders come up and I turn and I see people like in my face trying to get me up off the floor and then behind them I see the gurney get there and the, the paramedics so I'm, I'm, I'm calm at this point but like dude it's okay you might have just passed out or something they put me back on the chair actually they lifted me up and put me onto the bed and they waited for the, the paramedic people to get their act together and then roll their gurney in and then transfer me I transferred myself basically from that bed to their bed so I could take my little joy ride to the emergency room. Uh, again, guys, I'm, share, I'm a share. I'm not gonna hold anything back, so I hope you're enjoying this episode. I get to the ER. Uh, they start doing their normal admittance process. Uh, I learned that uh, more of their collapsed lung cases are more trauma-related. That's when I learned the definition behind, behind spontaneous pneumothorax versus a, tra a traumatic pneumothorax. Uh, traumatic pneumothorax is Mind you, according to my first x-ray that, that night, uh, they noted I had a 35% collapse of my left lung. I could have swore he said only 20, but then I read the stuff on the website later. I have a special access into the back of my account, and it ended up being that. So it's like, oh, lovely. So anyway, they prepped me. Uh, Kristen gets there after dinner. Um, we're hanging out, and like, okay, we, we have to prepare you for, we have to get a chest tube in you. They got me on air and all this crap. And they basically take a long needle, stick it down into my spine and try and um, you put a nerve blocker in because then they have to inject uh, like um, basically nerve killer or painkiller uh, in, in the general area where they're about to slice into the side wall of my chest. Sorry, I'm going to prevent graphic, but long story short, there's a surgeon there in the ER or the ER guy. And then there's like, this is a teaching hospital. I feel like I'm on ER. There's this younger doctor who's like a resident learning from that guy, and he's teaching him a brand new procedure that he's never done before. And they're doing all this and cutting it into my chest wall to jam a, a plastic tube into my chest, which then is hooked up to a piece of equipment that sucks the air out. And then I get these stabbing pains, which are basically my lung re restoring to full inflation. And the lung is basically hitting the side of my chest wall. So much fun. Fast forward, we give it a few days. We learn that uh, it's probably as a result of a bleb. So that's the lesson of this episode, ladies and gentlemen. If you are a tall, like myself, I'm six foot four, lean and athletic endurance athlete, uh, this usually sees this in runners, you could develop from convulsive coughing in your long thoracic region, your upper body, uh, what's called a bleb. Basically, convulsive coughing could lead to you uh, popping an alveoli, which is one of your air sacs in your lungs. Uh, that air can manifest to the surface, again, I'm not a doctor, this is what I learned. Uh, the air manifests to the surface level of your lung and creates a blister. The blister is called a bleb. If that blister pops, that releases air into your chest cavity because the blister is on the surface of your lung. Joy. 
So we're trying to get these blebs to heal. They don't heal. That's two, three days of trying to get them to heal. I'm on this, I, the whole time chest tube's in. Finally, like, I'm there like, listen, uh, every time we take you off, or they pinch off the chest tube and we do an update on x-ray, we're finding air again. It's not healing. If it did heal, you still would have had a 15 to 25% chance of a reoccurrence in your lifetime, especially in the next year. The procedure is a surgery. It's evasive, but we can get in there, jam a camera up into your chest wall, try and find the blebs. We slice them off, and then we scour the surface of your lung and scour the surface of your chest wall, which inflames them and pisses them off. And when we reinflate the lung after the surgery, uh, the inflammation adheres to itself. So that's what we opted to go for. Surgery was on Wednesday last week, as I'm recording this on Saturday, February 2nd, 2019. Uh, surgery was Wednesday. They jam a new chest tube back in to help, you know, the healing process. Uh, I got to enjoy with a breathing tube. Not cool. Next 24 hours, you know, rough throat, uh, scratchy, thirsty as hell. You know, once they take that thing out. Um, so Thursday was so much fun. And then uh, <clears throat> Friday, another recovery day. They decided to keep me another day till Saturday. Um, they approved me uh, after a 5.30 a.m. x-ray Saturday morning. They approved me to get cleared to remove the chest tube. They think everything's looking good. Chest tube finally comes out. We do an upset, update on x-ray in the next couple of hours. No air around the lung. We're looking good. And they discharge me. So eight days in the hospital, ladies and gentlemen. A uh, spontaneous pneumothorax, 35% lung collapse. And uh, yeah, uh, to sum up the whole stay, I'll put this in the show notes. Um, hospital food sucks. I had my fiance using our, our crock pot, slow cooking gra grass fed beef that I have flash frozen in the freezer because I, I buy a quarter of a cow every year now. Uh, I want nutrient dense proteins, healthy fats. Uh, she's bringing my healthy snack nuts like uh, Pilly Nuts uh, from eatpillynuts.com. All this stuff is on my affiliate section, my website for livethefuel.com. I got her bringing my nutritional shakes in. I'm hitting my vitamin regimen. They tried giving me crappy Centrum uh, along with drugs. I declined it, told the, uh, the doctor she needed to approve my vitamin regimen. Uh, they did, so don't be afraid to ask. Um, I did eat the hospital food, but it took some work. They tried serving me, serving me things like stuffed shells and uh, you know French toast. And I'm like, dude, I'm here to heal and recover and get out healthy. I do not need inflammatory foods. I'm not here for to make you make me feel like, ooh, I'm gonna give you dessert for breakfast. Sorry guys, French toast is death, okay? Stuffed shells is death. There's zero, zero nutritional value in any of that stuff, okay? Focus what you put in, what you fuel your body is what you get out. I'm, I told them, Eggs and bacon every morning. If you bring me lunch and dinner, it is a clean protein, no sauces. So if I can get a hold of beef, which was hard, great. I'm going with the chicken. And then I got my fiance bringing my stuff in. I'm, I got bone broth rolling in. I got photos, it's all on Instagram, guys. Like you can see this all at Live the Fuel. You can see that at Scott W. Mulvaney is my screen name, my personal feed. I'm actually gonna throw a quick screen share here for the, uh, the video that I'm recording on my Zoom webinar. It's not obviously live on the YouTube here, but uh, there's pictures of me on here. There's like literally, I'm not kidding guys, there's shots of me in the hospital bed. Uh, again, I'm gonna screen share this one again. That's literally me coming out of surgery. You know, the ch chest tubes suck. Um, but that's stuff on the Live the Fuel feed, okay? Uh, all of this stuff is public. I did not hide anything. It's on Facebook, it's on Instagram. Mr. Health Fitness Junkie can get taken out, okay? I am still human. And uh, I do feel a little bit like a jackass, but thank God, you know, I don't rip on the medical profession, okay? This was time to have an MD help me. I brag on the show that I know more about nutrition than most doctors. I proved it this past week in the hospital from what they were trying to give me. Uh, it's, it's atrocious. So, but don't be afraid to institute your own self-care, your own self-education. Um, you know, here's a shot. I, I, I got them to finally get me double eggs and double bacon. So I didn't know you can actually order double up. You know, I'm rocking my, this, my coffee mug here in the photo is actually full of bone broth, thanks to my loving fiance, shout out to Dr. Kristen, fence to mocker, my lovely future wife. So that's how I'm gonna sum it up, guys. I'm gonna do another screen share here, again, on the Scott W. Mulvaney feed. Here's shots of my bags of bone broth. I've got a big bin of bacon. There's a big plate of cheddar cheese. Like, I'm not messing around, guys. Substitute, supplement, uh, take your health and fitness seriously, especially if you're in and under medical care. 
Uh, they know a lot about medicine. They know a lot about their drugs and their surgical procedures, and I respect them for that. My staff was amazing. Shout out to St. Luke's Hospital, St. Luke's University Network, all the different people I got to meet. Dr. Harrison was my attending. She did the surgery. Uh, all of her PAs, all of the nurses, all of the physician care assistants, so many different job titles, I couldn't keep up. Uh, so long story short, I'm back. So today is uh, Saturday the 2nd, one week after my discharge. I've got a long road ahead. No lifting weights, more than 10 pounds for the next four weeks. No lifting anything heavier than 25 pounds, the second set of four weeks. And I'm on a seven week countdown to my wedding, which is a heli skiing wedding in Banff, Canada. So I'm gonna listen to everything they tell me to do. I'm gonna do as much as I'm allowed to do for cardiovascular training I have been cleared for because I need to be healthy, I need to be fit. I need to be able to safely get on a plane fly to Canada and rock out our adrenaline junkie adventurous wedding with some heli skiing and just the beautiful mountains of Banff in the Alberta province and all the wonderful, we're gonna be dropping in over in the British Columbia as well. It's gonna be an amazing adventure. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's the 250th episode. Thanks for our continuous listeners for hanging with me. Thanks for being patient with this recent health scare. I know podcasts have gone up late. Technically, this one should have aired yesterday, uh, but guess what, uh, I'm human and I made the decision to take some extra days of rest because this is still my first week out of the hospital. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for tuning in to another powerful, I'm hoping powerful, with Fuel Show. I hope you enjoyed my truth and transparency. Um, and again, my, my public service announcement is, if you know tall, lean athletes, don't scare them with this, but make sure they're aware of blebs and spontaneous pneumothorax potential uh, because I did find out that a good friend of mine, her son's girlfriend last year, was finishing a softball tournament championship and got the same exact thing happened to her because she was a tall, lanky, lean athlete. Uh, granted, younger, I'm 41. They're not expecting this type of stuff, but I guess that's the fun of me being a health and fitness junkie is I could survive a lung collapse better than most, but you can still get injured. So uh, again, last part of the big picture message here, take care of yourself, focus on self-care. What you put in is what you get out. Nutrition is important, but also proper rest and recovery, and obviously proper mindset, stress relief, bringing the cortisol levels down. I was pulling out all the stops, and I'm still pulling out all the stops so I could bounce back as fast, as healthy as possible. So thanks for tuning in. This is obviously a healthy and lifestyle-focused podcast. Not much business talk today. Uh, we have other guest co-hosts for that for you guys. So thanks for tuning in. We're here to fuel your health, your business, and your lifestyle. So please, please share this, please share the message, please share the video, whatever you want to do. Uh, please subscribe, please get me some reviews. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you guys again soon. All right, YouTube fans, that's it. I'm, uh, I'm done. Stay tuned for the other video. It's pretty much gonna be just like this, uh, but you guys got to tune in live. And uh, that's episode 250th. You can't keep me down for long. You can't keep me out of it. Um, I still got messages to share and healthy uh, messages to pass on. So again, I got my water. I got my coffee. As I hinted about the health of your uh, hospital stays and your health and nutrition, you know, make sure you're fueling up right, guys. Thanks for hanging with me. Uh, love YouTube world. We'll talk to you guys again soon.